Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Resident Evil 4 commentary playthrough. Don't know what you would want to call it, but uh, we're back anyway. <laughs> and the last time we uh, left off, we um, actually just got started with Chapter 3. Ashley's been kidnapped and, uh, well, again, for like the second time. And uh, it looks like we're beginning our... Uh... Oh boy, you... Line. We didn't want you telling everyone any unnecessary information. Where's Ashley? Ah, oh, so she fell into one of our wonderful traps. We'll make sure we find her. Don't you worry about her. Oh yes, I let our miserable insects out for some exercise down in the sewer. Lovely. Thanks. That should keep me company, cause boredom kills me. I look forward to our next encounter in another life. Alright, so Ashley's been kidnapped and there's no other way except through the store, so let's go on ahead and go through it. So, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've done another uh, session of Resident Evil 4. Um, actually, the reason why it took me a little bit was because, well, according to you guys, you know, well, not according to you guys, I should say. Um, as far as you guys are concerned, this playthrough is just going to keep on going swimmingly. While on my end, I've taken, you know, more than enough of frequent breaks between each session because I've had other things going uh, concerning with my uh, group commentary channel and all that jazz. So, yeah. Um, so... At that rate, uh, we're gonna go on ahead and uh, get introduced to this new little creature here. These bugs. Now, what these bugs are is that um, you know they're, they're they're not friendly. They're not friendly at all. The best way to take care of them is I've always found use for the shotgun at this point in time. Um, there's gonna be one down there. And, uh, I don't know why I jumped down there. That's kind of like a dipshit move on my end. But, luckily, we've... You can find distinctive... You, you can find where there are, as long as you know where the footsteps are. Shit, 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 shit. Don't fucking... Ugh, oh, god damn, okay. Uh, I need to heal myself pretty badly. Let's go on ahead and do that. Da, 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 da. Okay. And let's go on ahead and, um... I don't know what I'm doing. Alrighty. You can find out where these guys are just by telling where their footsteps are and uh, where their eyes are glimmering. You'll, you'll, see, you'll see the glitter in their eyes when they're invisible. And that's the only uh, downside of, you know, these guys is that they will turn invisible at will. They will attack you and they do hurt a lot. But luckily, you know, with the, um, oh, what would you call it? Uh, what do you call those? Uh, Contact-sensitive timing event, contact-sensitive events. Uh, you can pretty much just avoid those guys like the plague. So, uh, make ease with that. And I don't know why. Oh, shit, that was close. But, uh, these guys can get a bit excessive and annoying at times, but if you know how to handle them, then they shouldn't be an issue. And this is the only area that will run into them, so... Yeah, there's that. Um... Oh, shit! Yeah! That was close. They can hurt. And what's so famous about the Resident Evil 4 game is that there's so many death scenes. You can die in so many ways in this game. Which I'm not going to be um, showing off for the sake of this playthrough because I want to get things rolling here. Um, but I will put a link in the description below to, uh, you know, sh a long time ago, a person actually... I can't remember the name of the user, but um, he took the t he or she took the time out of their own hands to uh, create a compilation video of you know the deaths that occur in this game, man. You know I really do enjoy that because you know there's there's 
a couple of ways that I didn't know how you could die in the game itself. So I mean, I, I found that really interesting. And oh god, oh god, ack! Yeah, the downside of recording for live commentary is just that, you know, it's it's a pain. It can be a pain sometimes because. Honestly, I've ha I have the TV down so that it doesn't, you know, the volume doesn't catch onto the microphone itself. I need to find a way to actually see if I can, uh, you know, have the gameplay go through my headset so I know that the sound is recording, so I know, so I can be more wary of my surroundings. But it seems I'm doing a good job so far. So really, no complaint in that compartment or department or whatever. But anyway, here's our second jewelry. We've recently, when we killed these bugs, uh, you've noticed that we picked up these little pieces called the eye pieces. And what the eye pieces do is that you just want to go on ahead and examine it. And you know that you're going to have to combine it with this butterfly lamp. Now we only need two more pieces. Um, I'm trying to remember when we get the mask to put that piece of jewelry in, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty certain that it's soon. Um, before I forget, we want to go on ahead and turn this valve so that we can drain the water and can progress through this uh, area section of the game. Um, hi. Fuck off. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully the volume doesn't catch onto the microphone because honestly, I've, I have the TV even even at like two or three, my HD TV can get very loud, and you know as much as I love that, it's kind of bothersome at times. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm running extremely low on, uh, actually, I wonder if it's okay if I can switch to my TMP ammo. Let's go ahead and switch to my TMP ammo. Uh-huh. Fuck you. It's not a wise idea to, uh, use a TMP against these guys, because it does take a while for them to kill. That's why I usually just go on ahead and use my shotgun. Um, because they make short work of those guys. You could use a sniper rifle, but uh, I advise against it. Instead of kick, I'm just going to shoot that guy in the face, because why not? And we've officially ran out of shotgun ammo. This looks boning. Anyway, we found a next eyepiece. And, ooh. Don't know why I didn't open this before, but another file, Lewis's memo. So there's going to be, you know, I think there's only three uh, memos by Lewis, but pretty much it tells you about, you know, the each each type of um, enemies that we go against this game. Like, for example, uh, let's go on ahead and read through this here. There are some parasites that have the ability to control their hosts. It's a... Uh, a blah. It's a haste knowledge among biologists, but not much is known to as to how the p parasites do it. Studying these parasites specifically might reveal some clues to as to how the powers of the Las Plagas work, and perhaps provide more insight on the victims of the Las Plagas, the Los Ganados. Here is a list of some parasites that have the ability to manipulate the behavioral patterns of their host. And see this one right here, I can't pronounce it, so... Um, yeah, so I'm just going to skip the name. The name's right there. You can see it right there. Once the larva of this parasite migrates to the ant's uh, esophagus, it alters the behavior of the ant. When the temperature sh drops in the evening, the infected ant climbs to the top of the plant and clamps onto the leaf using its mandible. It stays there immobile until the next morning, placing the ant where it's most vulnerable to be e eaten by the browsing herbivore such as sheep. One could conclude that the parasite is manipulating the host's behavior to make its way into the body of its definitive host. And then here's our second uh, type of um, 
our second type of um, thing. The larva of the parasite makes its home inside the brain of fish, such as yellowtail and uh, par parrot bass. So in this example, it'd be the um, what was that fish that we just went against? The um, fuck. We'll just go with El Gigante at this point, because no, actually no. I think it's um los. Ah, eh, fuck it. I can't think. Once infected, the fish make their way up to the water surface where they will they'll swim until eaten by seabirds. Once again, this uh, peculiar behavior can only be explained by the parasite's desire to get into the bodies of the seabirds. And then lastly, this little thing right here. This parasite spor uh, sporokis develop in the snail's tentacles. The sporokis are vivid in color and poso uh, blah, pulsate continually somewhat like a worm. Surprisingly, the infected snail makes its way to the top of a plant where it is more visible to the eyes of birds, therefore more likely to be eaten. Once eaten by a bird, the parasite will complete its metamorphosis into an adult. So yeah, pretty fucked up um, experiments that they've been holding here. Anyway, we've picked up all that we can here. Once you jump down here, prepare to fight another... These guys. Wherever they are. Oh, you son of a bitch. You were behind me. Where are you? There you are. Fucking kill you. <sighs> no! No, 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 it might kill me, it might kill me, it might kill me. Yep, it killed me. Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, fuck. Let's continue and hope I don't have to go through that section again. Pretty sure I don't have to, though. Oh, God, I do. I guess I'll just have to cut when I, you know, get to that section again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Sorry about that. So it was kind of stupid on my end, but hey, what can you do? So anyway, we're going to go on ahead and take out this bastard once and for all. And finally move forward in the game. Oh, man. So, as I said before, we got key treasures here. We got the green eye, we got the red eye. We want to attach these pieces into the butterfly lamp. And, uh, yeah. So, go ahead and combine that. And, uh, let's continue onward. Go ahead and go over here, take that. Let me go ahead and reload my shotgun just in case. And. Nothing. No, hold on. I see a wooden barrel. A couple of them, actually. There we go. And let's go through this door. And you want to be careful of this section right here because if you t if you move at the wrong step, like if if you run too late, you will get hit by that guillotine and it is a game over. So uh, keep that in mind. And then there's these two fuckers right here. Alrighty, we're good. It's generally not that hard to pass, but if you do, uh, you know, pass by a little late, you will get hit by that guillotine and it'll be a game over, so keep that in mind. Anyway, we're just out, almost out of the sewer system. Let's go ahead and take out this grenade because these will come in handy in this next section that we're about to go into.